So in this presentation, we'll see the ultrasonography of the male reproductive tract of dogs and cats. So first, we'll start with the ultrasonography of the prostate. So the indications of the ultrasonographic examination of the prostate would be a bloody discharge from the penis, some hematuria or dysuria, tenesmus or dyskesia. Also, if we have a severe caudal abdominal pain, uh, fever or infertility, for example. So, first, to look for the prostate, we usually use an um, abdominal approach. Sometimes um, the prostate is located into the, the pelvic canal, so then it will be difficult to reach. The prostate is uh, located caudal to the bladder, so here we have the bladder and here we have the uh, prostate, so we follow the bladder neck and in general we arrive directly on the prostate. Here we have the pelvic edge, uh, so that's a pubic bone already, so we can see that sometimes it can obscure the caudal aspect of the prostate uh, um, <coughs> at this level. So the prostate is usually homogeneous with a hyperechoic bilobed structure, so here it's a longitudinal image of the prostate. The urethra can be uh, visible in the middle, so here we see this thin hypoechoic line within the middle of the prostate. Then we can have some uh, variation of the prostate with the age, so in all the non-castrate dog it can become a bit bigger and in a castrated dog on the contrary like in this example the prostate would appear small and hypoechoic so that's typical image of a prostate in a castrated dog so what we will see the prostate can have some uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia so um, <coughs> we will see that commonly in middle-aged dogs in general, it's due to a glandular hyperplasia, secondary to hormonal imbal imbalance, and it will be often an incidental finding. Sometimes it can lead to clinical signs like dysuria or tenesmus, some, some bloody ritual discharge, but rarely the dog will have uh, systemic signs. So this uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia will appear as a symmetrically enlarged prostate. The prostate can become very uh, large eh, with this uh, problem. Uh, but the borders of the prostate will remain smooth uh, and the parenchyma will remain uh, iso to hypoechoic. So like we have in this example, uh, the parenchyma is quite hypoechoic and we will see multiple small hypoechoic cysts within the parenchyma. Those cysts in general measure less than one centimeter. Uh, when, it's, when we look for uh, the prostate on an ultrasound examination, we also have to check the sublumbar lymph node uh, because then it will help us to differentiate between different problems of the prostate. So in case of benign prostatic hyperplasia, the lymph node shouldn't show any uh, problem. They shouldn't be enlarged, they shouldn't be uh, uh, hypoechoic, um, so they really should be normal or not visible. Then we can have the prostatitis, and with the prostatitis we can have a uh, uh, different uh, features. So this prostatitis they can be due to bacterial infection. Uh, most commonly it would be due to bacterial infection and this infection would be uh, ascending uh, from the urinary tract. Rarely it will be secondary to a septicemia and even more rare it will be due to fungal infection or to lymphocytic lymphoplasmacytic inflammation. Often um, the prostatitis will be secondary to a primary disorder of the prostate, so a benign hyperplasia, a squamous metaplasia, or a neoplasia. So what we will see on ultrasound, we will see uh, an enlargement, uh, generally, that can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, but sometimes the prostate won't be enlarged, it will just be uh, heterogeneous, but not enlarged. Um, the uh, parenchyma will become heterogeneous, so like we can see in this example with a bit hypoechoic areas, 
uh, but mostly what we will look for also it's large cysts or cyst like structures of variable size but in general those cysts they will become more than one centimeter and as soon as they are more than one centimeter they are suspicious and we should aspirate them to determine if it is uh, infected or not so it's uh, because then it would be signs of uh, abscesses of course huh? so we will possibly see some abscesses or some mineralizations but only if the prostatitis is chronic so in this case for example we have here a mineralization into the prostate uh, in this case of prostatitis and uh, with abscess um, so it's signs of a chronic uh, disease already in this image we can see that the surrounding of the prostate are not very clear that it is uh, surrounded by this hypoechoic uh, uh, region there and a bit of hypoechoic fat so that's already signs of inflammation around the prostate that's those signs are helping us to determine that it is a prostatitis and not just a benign hyperplasia. So that's why we have to look for all the signs because sometimes the uh, prostatitis uh, in the beginning when the cysts are still small can still look like a benign hyperplasia but then we can look for other signs so like we saw in the previous image a focal peritonitis so with hyperechoic fat or free fluid around the, the prostate so like we see here we have free fluid capsule uh, free fluid encapsulated in the region of the prostate here or here or here in this region so that's signs of focal inflammation around the prostate then the capsule of the gland is usually intact but it can be uh, interrupted uh, like we had in the previous image where uh, here the borders of the prostate are not very clear anymore then we can have a mild to moderate reactive lymphadenopathy so the medial iliac lymph node would be mildly enlarged uh, or moderately enlarged and uh, generally they will keep their normal parenchymous uh, appearance uh, they will stay homogeneous so uh, when we have those signs it's important to perform a fine needle aspiration uh, of the prostate for cytology and culture of course uh, to determine which bacteria is uh, present there on the prostate we can have also uh, cysts so those cysts we saw them uh, in hyperplasia and prostatitis we can see them also in uh, neoplasia but they can be also developmental congenital so they can be seen here uh, incidentally as well when there is no prostatitis or neoplasia it can just be sometimes incidental findings um, but if they are more than one centimeter we can see this one for example is just at the edge it's still safer to aspirate them just to be sure uh, that there is no infection in these uh, cysts then we have paraprostatic cysts so the paraprostatic cysts are free filled embryologic remnants of the Mullerian duct and they may communicate with intraprostatic cavitations they can become very large and extend into the pelvic canal like we see on those uh, radiographs so on this radiograph in fact it can create what we call the double bladder sign so here it's the bladder and the rest is just the prostatic cyst that creating another very large fluid filled cavity and we can see that they can extend really far away uh, into the pelvic canal they can become extremely large on the radiograph of we can see sometimes also it's some cyst wall mineralizations or of the stalk mineralization the stalk being the part of the of the cyst that is attaching to the prostate itself so on the uh, ultrasound they will appear as uh, anechoic fluid filled structures but uh, um, generally there will be an fluid but we can see sometimes some internal septae or some focal uh, echogenicities and membranes that can sediment also in the dorsal aspect of the um, uh, of the system the wall can be uh, variable it can be thin it can be thick can be smooth can be regular can be mineralized it really depends from one dog to another so here we have some example of paraprostatic cysts uh, in dogs so here we have the bladder 
the prostate, the urethra, and here we have the large cysts uh, surrounding uh, the prostate and the bladder. Here it's the same dog in the cross section, so here is the prostate and then the cysts that is quite irregular uh, with this wall, eh? it's not like the bladder which has a, a normal round of its wall, it's really becoming a bit irregular on the wall of the cysts. We can see it in cross section again, here it's the bladder and then that's the cyst around the bladder. Uh, well, it's just because it's growing and it's infiltrating the whole abdomen and will uh, go o over the bladder. But it's not always growing cranially into the abdomen, it can go also grow also caudally and then go into the pelvic inlet and sometimes even uh, in some cases if the dog has a perineal hernia, it can even go into the perineal, perineal hernia sac. Then we have the prostatic neoplasia, they are seen in all the dogs, uh, it can be seen in neutered and in intact dogs, so it's not because the dog is neutered or uh, that uh, there will be no possibility of having a prostatic neoplasia, on the contrary uh, they are uh, predisposed to get prostatic neoplasia. Those uh, neoplasia they can metastasize to the sublumbar lymph nodes, so again it's very important to check the medial iliac lymph nodes. Uh, because it will help us to determine if there is a prostatitis or a neoplasia. It c they can also metastatize to the bones of the lumbar spine or the pelvis uh, or in the lungs, so it's important also to take some radiographs of those bones and of those lungs to, uh, to do the staging of those um, prostatic neoplasia. They can also extend locally into the urethra or into the bladder neck. So, a lot of different histological types have been uh, reported for those prostatic neoplasia. The most common ones are adenocarcinoma or different types of carcinomas. So on the ultrasound, they will uh, the prostate will appear enlarged and uh, often irregular and asymmetric. But uh, mostly what we will see is that the parenchyma will become hypoechoic, like we can see here, very dark parenchyma of the prostate with some uh, heterogeneous aspect and some cavitations. And often we will see also multiple hypoechoic foci within the um, parenchyma, plus sometimes some acoustic shadowing, like we can see in this example, um, meaning that those some of those uh, hyperechoic spots are in fact mineralizations within the prostate. So when we see mineralization in a prostate, it's often a sign of neoplasia, but we have to keep in mind that we can see that in some chronic cases of prostatitis. So we have still have to be careful with this sign and uh, not jump too quickly to the neoplasia diagnosis. Then there is a possible disruption of the capsule as well. So those prostatic neoplasia, they can really be difficult sometimes to differentiate from prostatitis. So what we can do to help us determine uh, if it's uh, prostatitis or neoplasia, we can first assess the sublumbar lymph nodes, the medial iliac lymph nodes that normally are less than one centimeter. And if they become like here severely enlarged, and here it's almost three centimeter, hypoechoic, or very heterogeneous, so that's definitely signs in this lymph node that there is metastasis. So then we are sure that then in the prostate it has to be neoplasia also and not just a prostatitis. We can also look for signs of extension. So if there is extension in the bladder or the urethra, then it will be most likely a neoplasia. And of course we can perform some uh, aspiration or biopsies under ultrasound guidance. <laughs>